Hi guys, in this video as promised I'm going to teach you how to reduce fractions to their simplest form. Okay, So there's many ways to go about this. This is one I've used over the years and has worked for me. So whichever way you use they will always uh, they'll end up with the same result and it's just a matter of what your uh, what, what, what way works for you and which way you like okay so let's start with some examples <clears throat> let's say we start with 3 over 12 now 3 over 12 to me I see that there's 3 that can go into both of these numbers and I can see that maybe we need to reduce this fraction but if you don't see anything this is the technique that we're gonna learn in this video that's gonna help Okay, so you want to rewrite this fraction in a simplest form. Basically, you want to cut out all the fat and leave only the muscle. Okay, and so we could break down each numer the numerator and the denominator separately into their factors. Okay, so let's draw an imaginary a ghost fraction here. And on the denominator, what's the factors of three? Well, three and times one. Right? And this 1, you'll see that you don't even really need to write it because anything times 1 is back to uh, gets you that number. So 3 times 1. Now the 12, we can break that down into 3 times 4. right? And we can even break this 4 down into 2 times 2. right? So we can do this in multiple steps. So 3, and then this 4 right is 2 times 2 right maybe I'll circle this but I don't want to actually leave that because you're gonna see we're going to so now we've basically broken down these two original numbers into their respective factors and so we're ready to actually simplify so whatever is in common with the top and the bottom we can cross out so we see that there's a three here and a three here so we can cross these threes out and whatever is left that we can't cross out we just simply multiply it back up so that's just only a one up there and down here there's a two times two so there's a four and that's it we've converted one I mean three over twelve to one over four okay and that is the simplest form. Let's do more problems. How about 21 over 28? Okay. We know 21 is 3 times 7. And we know 28 is 4 times 7. We also know we can break down this 4 maybe two, 2 times 2 just like we did in the last uh, problem and we just keep going until we can't break things down anymore right 2 times 2 is for the 4 and the 7 is just the 7 from before and the numerator we can't break it down any further right because 3 can't break down to anything further 7 can't break down to anything further and so now we're ready to see if we could cancel anything out well, there's no 3 down here, so this 3 stays. There's no 2's up here, so these 2's stay. But look, the 7's are in common. I have 1 7 up there and 1 7 up here, so I can get rid of that 7. 7 up. <laughs> so we're left with 3 in the numerator and 2 times 2, 4 in the denominator. So 21 over 28 is equivalent to 3 over 4. And that is the simplest form. Let's do more problems. Three. How about six over twelve? Well, six we can break down into two times three. And twelve we can break down into two times six. Six, furthermore, we can break down into two times three. and that 2 from before remains and the numerator we can't break these down any further so again this 2 remains here and this 6 broke it down into 2 times 3 
okay so now we got it all into its simplest uh, factors and we can see what we can cross out right so we have two twos we have a two up here and we have a two down here we can get rid of these two we have a three up here and a three down here we can get rid of one three and all that's left is this two in the denominator but remember if there's nothing left in this numerator there's always a times one okay there's always a times one there we just don't write it and you'll notice that a lot of times in mathematics times one is just eliminated because it really doesn't do anything multiplying something by one gets you back to that number it's the multiplicative identity it's called so we don't really write it okay but it's there and it's important for you to know that it's there okay so let's write our answer here so in the top we've crossed everything out so all that's left is one if we've crossed everything out all that's left is one not zero okay one and the denominator all that's left is two so six twelfths is equal to one half okay let's do another example how about 7 over 49 let's jump right in factors of the numerator are just 7 times 1 factors of the denominator 7 times 7 okay it helps to know your your uh, multiplication tables for these problems okay none of these can be broken down further so we just have 7 and 7 times 7 in the denominator. Now we can get rid of 1 7 because we have 1 in the top and 1 in the bottom. So we can get rid of them. We pair them up essentially. And what's left is just a 1 in the numerator and a 7 in the denominator. Okay? Now maybe we'll do one more example here. How about about 17 over 51 now this is a fun one because most people don't know that 51 actually does is not a prime number okay so let's break the numerator down into its factors and 17 doesn't break down to anything so because it's prime so that's 17 times 1 and 51 actually breaks down to 17 times three and to prove it I'll do it on the side here with another color I couldn't believe this when I first saw it 17 times 3 to prove that 17 and 3 are factors of 51 let's do 17 times 3 it's 3 times 7 is 21 carry the 2 3 times 1 time plus 2 is 51 okay so there's the proof <laughs> okay so now we've broken these down into their factors 17 doesn't break down as I said any further 3 doesn't break down right meaning th they're prime numbers they don't have any fra factors other than themselves so we're ready to actually cancel some stuff out we have a 17 up here and a 17 down there we pair them up and we cross them out and we can't cross out the 1 and we can't cross out the 3 so we're left with 1 over 3 Okay, so this is how you reduce fractions to their simplest form. You break them out into their the numerator and the denominator into their factors, and then you see what common factors they have. You cancel those factors out, and you're left with just the muscle and none of the fat. Okay, this is how you answer most questions in math classes in simplest form, which is usually what they require. Okay. If you want to watch more videos on fractions, I have done videos on adding and subtracting fractions, multiplying fractions, dividing fractions, and I'm going to do a video on converting improper fractions to mixed numbers and mixed numbers to improper fractions. So make sure to subscribe so you can get all these videos as soon as they're released without having to search for them and you stay on the same course instead of jumping around with someone else's technique I think it, the best idea is to pick one teacher and stick with them and occasionally watch other videos and get another perspective okay so till next time thanks a lot for watching make sure to subscribe and comment 
and have a great day.